to sample the stream and it benefits the public to make sure that the water is safe to drink with, irrigate with, and recreate on. Our VIPA um, has a, it's a data gap right now. We're trying to fulfill certain parameters we're missing. And so we're out here, we come out four times a year. Um, so that way we're able to collect um, seasonality differences. Uh, so we're going to collect um, E. coli, we're looking for E. coli and dissolved oxygen particularly for the stream. We have various parameters that we look for. Uh, today we'll be collecting general um, field parameters, VO and pH, temperature, conductivity, those kind of things. And then we'll be collecting uh, metals, nutrients, and inorganic. ADQ doesn't always have automatic access to every single site that we try and sample. For example, Air Viper Creek is located on Bureau of Land Management, um, so we have to get permission from them to sample here. Whereas other sites are located on the Forest Service, which we can get access to. Um, and we have some on private property where we need to contact the local landowners. After we sample, when we get back to the truck, we have a few more things to complete our sampling trip. We um, filter for the dissolved metals uh, using a tube and a large filter. That takes out all the sediment. And then we will add preservatives like sulfuric acid and nitric acid to preserve the samples and keep the integrity until we get them to the lab. So we put them on ice and we'll get them to the lab within uh, 24 hours. We're back at the lab now after sampling at a stream and we collected our E. coli sample. And we're going to add some special powder to the bottle and the bacteria, if E. coli is present, they'll eat this powder and it will make them fluoresce. And then we add the sample to this tray. And we try to keep it sterile so we don't touch inside. And then we try and take out all the bubbles. Then we add it to the tray, or the sealer, and that's going to make sure that the sample is evenly dispersed among those cells. That's what it looks like. And then we'll put the cell in an incubator, which keeps it at the, a constant temperature for 24 hours. And then we'll come back and stick it under a UV light and see uh, if there's E. coli present. So it's been 24 hours and we're ready to check our E. coli sample. Um, I've taken it out of the incubator and placed it under this UV light. And what I'm going to do is mark each cell that is fluorescing. And then we'll go back and look at a table and equate it to uh, how much E. coli was in the stream at that time of sampling. So I finished marking um, the cells that were fluorescing under the UV light, and I can take it out now. And what I'll do is I'll count the number of large cells and small cells, and then I'll use this table to get a number that we'll put in the database, and then that number will be used for assessment. And that lets us know how much E. coli was in the stream at that point in time and day of sampling.